Hey guys, today we're going to cover polycystic ovarian syndrome. But before we proceed to the actual disease, it's very important to cover some of the basic principles of the ovaries. This is going to help us tremendously in understanding the disease. Now, ovaries contain these functional units, which are called the follicles. Now, each follicle contains an oocyte surrounded by granulosa cells and theca cells. So, if we take a follicle and put it under a microscope, this is what we're going to see. We're going to see oocyte, which is surrounded by granulosa cells, which is all these cells around here. This is all granulosa cells. And surrounding the granulosa cells are these cells called theca cells. So these are all theca cells. Okay. Now, LH acts on theca cells, which induces androgen synthesis. And FSH uh, stimulates granulosa cells, which then they're going to convert the androgen made by the theca cells into estradiol. Now, this estradiol drives the proliferative phase of the endometrial cycle. Estradiol surge induces an LH surge, which leads to ovulation. Now, after ovulation, the residual follicle becomes corpus luteum, which is going to secrete progesterone. This, this is going to drive the secretory phase of the endometrial cycle, which is going to prepare the endometrium for possible pregnancy. Now, the generation of these follicle results in follicular cysts. This is normal. And small amount, small number of these follicular uh, cysts are very common in women and they really don't have uh, no clinical significance but if they ha there are too many of them then that becomes problematic which we're gonna get into that now I made this uh, diagram which is gonna cover a lot of important facts and key points about this disease now this is gonna be the normal pathway and the next slide is gonna go through the pathway of the polycystic ovarian syndrome so it's very important to understand this pathway now, gonadotropin releasing hormone is secreted from the hypothalamus, which is going to work and act on anterior pituitary, which then is going to release LH and FSH. Now, as we said, LH is going to work on the theca cells, and theca cells are going to start synthesizing androgen using enzyme desmolase, also known as 7 alpha hydroxylase. Now, this androgen is going to go to granulosa cells. And by the help of FSH, which is going to stimulate these granulosa cells, get converted into estradiol. The enzyme here is aromatase. It's very important to know which enzyme is in which cells. So aromatase is only available in granulosa cells. And desmolase, uh, which is also known as 7-alpha-hydroxylase, is only available in theca cells. Now, deficiency in one of these enzymes is going to lead to other manifestations. And so now we have estradiol, which is going to work on the oocyte and help maturing this oocyte. So this is the normal pathway. Now, in polycystic ovarian syndrome, the problem is we have too much LH. That's the main point of this disease. This increase in LH is going to work on theca cells. And the theca cells again gonna make androgen, but it's they're gonna make too much of this androgen. Now, if you look at the top uh, left corner, we can see that increasing androgen does two things. First, it's gonna cause hirsutism, which is abnormal growth of hair. The other thing it does, it gonna it's gonna travel to the adipose tissue, and get uh, converted into estrone. So we're gonna have too much estrone in the body. Now this estrone, what it does, it negative feedbacks the release of FSH. So we don't have any more FSH. Therefore, FSH cannot assimilate the granulosa cells. Even though we have a lot of androgen, we cannot make estradiol. Therefore, we will not, uh, since there's a decrease in estradiol, we will not mature the egg. Therefore, we're going to have cystic degeneration of the follicles. So this is the pathway you need to know in, un in order to understand this disease. Now again we have increase in LH 
which is going to increase uh, production of androgen. Androgen, too much androgen is going to cause hirsutism, or is going to travel to adipose tissue. It's going to increase production of estrone, which then is going to have a negative feedback on FSH. Therefore, we're going to have decrease in estradiol, and we will not have maturation of the egg, which is going to lead to cystic degeneration of the follicles. If you look at this picture, here's the ovary, and you can see all the cysts inside the ovary. Now, clinical manifestations are going to be amenorrhea due to increased androgen production, hirsutism due to increased androgen production, we're going to have infertility due to cystic ovaries. And the patient is going to present with obesity because uh, obese patients, they have too much adipose tissue. Therefore, they're going to make too much estrone. Okay. Now, this polycystic ovarian syndrome is highly associated with type 2 diabetes because type 2 diabetes is associated with obesity. And also, these patients have a high risk of developing endometrium carcinoma and this is due to to um, high circulating estrone which is another form of estrogen in the body now how do we treat well we can the first line of treatment is weight loss we can ask the patient to exercise and get on a good diet to lose some of those adipose tissues to lose some fat we can also use oral contraceptives which is going to suppress the synthesis of FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary. Here our target is LH because we have too much LH in this disease. We can also use clomiphene which prevents the normal feedback inhibition and it's going to increase the release of LH and FSH. So here our target is increased release of FSH and prevent the negative feedback caused by estrone. We can also use uh, spironolactone, which is a potassium sparing diuretic. Uh, what it does, it's an aldosterone receptor antagonist, but it's also anti androgenic. So we can use it to treat uh, hirsutism. We can also use ketoconazole, which is an antifungal drug. What it does, it inhibits uh, production or synthesis of ergosterol, which is very unique to the fungal membrane. And another thing it does, it inhibits androgen synthesis by inhibiting desmolase enzyme in the thecal cells. And we can also use this to treat hirsutism. Now, this is everything you guys really need to know about polycystic ovarian syndrome for step one. Make sure you watch this video a couple of times, write your own notes, maybe uh, draw the graph for yourself. And this is basically all you need to know. Okay, guys, take care.